The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning and welcome. Uh, thank you for joining with me for Midday with Gray. Midday uh, with Gray is part of the Church Beyond Our Doors outreach program here at St. George's, the Anglican Parish in the beautiful Blue Mountains. Today is Wednesday, October the 14th, and I'd like to share a service of morning prayer that comes from the Australian prayer book used with permission. Let's take a little moment of silence before we come together in our time of prayer and scripture reflection. Friends in Christ, we come together to meet with God and to take our part in the building up of his church. We will lift up our hearts in thanks and praise. We will hear from God's holy word we will pray for our world and for ourselves. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Open our lips, O Lord, and we shall declare your praise. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. The Bible tells us to approach God confidently through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and strength for our lives. This we pray in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now for the ministry of God's word. Today's first reading uh, comes from Psalm 119 and we'll be sharing verses 1 to 24. Uh, again, uh, Psalm 119 is an acrostic, which means that each uh, stanza or section of the psalm starts with one of the, the Hebrew letters. Uh, so we're starting at the very beginning today with uh, the letters Aleph, Beit, Gimel, up, right up to Dalet. Um, so have you ever heard of the alphabet? Uh, it's interesting that the first two letters of the Hebrew alphabet are Aleph Beit. Uh, so let's read together verses 1 uh, through to 24. Again, this is Psalm 119. Happy are they whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Happy are they who observe his decrees and seek him with all of their hearts, who never do any wrong, but always walk in his ways. You lay down your commandments that we should fully keep them. Oh, that my ways were made so direct that I may keep your statutes. Then I should not be put to shame when I regard all of your commandments. I will thank you with unfeigned heart when I have learned your righteous judgments. I will keep your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. How shall a young man cleanse his way? by keeping to your words. With my whole heart I will seek you. Let me not stray from your commandments. I treasure your promise in my heart that I may not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord, instruct me in your statutes. With my lips will I recite all of the judgments of your mouth. I have taken greater delight in the way of your decrees than in all manner of riches. I will meditate on your commandments and I will give attention to your ways. My delight is in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Deal bountifully with your servant, that I may live and keep your word. Open my eyes that I may see the wonders of your law. I'm a stranger here on earth. Do not hide your commandments from me. My soul is consumed at all times with longing for your judgments. You have rebuked the insolent. Cursed are those who stray from your commandments. Turn me from shame and rebuke, for I have kept your decrees. Even though rulers sit and plot against me, I will meditate on your statutes, for your decrees are my delight, and they are my counselors. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. The second reading that is appointed for today comes from the book of Jonah. 
and it's chapter 1, verses 17, uh, to chapter 2, verse 10. A reading from the book of Jonah. But the Lord provided a large fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. And there he sang this, prayed this song of thanksgiving in the belly of the fish, saying, I called to the Lord in my distress, and he answered me. Out of the belly of shale I cried, and you heard my voice. You cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood surrounded me. All of your waves and your billows passed over me. Then I said, I am driven away from your sight. How shall I look again upon your holy temple? The waters closed in over me, the deep surrounded me. Weeds were wrapped around my head at the roots of the mountains. I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever. Yet you brought me up, brought up my life from the pit, O Lord my God. As my life was ebbing away, I remember the Lord, and my prayer came to you, into your holy temple. Those who worship vain idols forsake your true loyalty, but I, with the voice of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you. What I vowed I will pay. Deliverance belongs to the Lord. Then the Lord spoke to the fish, and it spewed Jonah out upon the dry land. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now our second reading today, uh, taken from the book of Jonah, uh, the figure of Jonah in the Old Testament is a really interesting one, because he's counted among the minor prophets, although he's never referred to explicitly as a prophet in the text. The story of Jonah is a story about a man called by God to testify against the wickedness and the abandonment of God that was evident in his day of age. But Jonah isn't the model of an obedient servant. In fact, it seems that he's the most unlikely, reluctant prophet who does everything in his power to run away from God's call in his life. Whenever God summons Jonah to carry out his will, Jonah heads in the opposite direction which makes for a somewhat comical story, despite the serious themes of repentance and deliverance that are central to the text. Now, in today's portion of the text, we get, uh, we've get we read the Psalm of Thanksgiving. The story suggests that Jonah prays, or perhaps even sings, this prayer from the belly of the great fish. The hymn is not an act of distress, but it's an act of thanksgiving because of his deliverance. It not only responds to Jonah's supernatural rescue account of being spewed out on the shore from the belly of a great fish, but it also alludes to Nineveh's upcoming encounter with God's mercy. As you heard these words today, where might you remember in your own life times when you found yourself in distress? Was it your natural inclination to reach out to God during these times? And if not, why? primary theme in the book of Jonah is the faithfulness of God to us in our lives, especially in the times when we find that we're heading in the wrong direction. Sometimes the most appropriate prayer in our lives is simply this, Lord, point me in the direction that I need to be going in, for I know that you walk with me. And to this grace and mercy I say, thanks be to God. The final reading that I have to share with you uh, today comes from the Acts of the Apostles, coming from chapter 27, verses 9 to 26. Uh, we will hear the account of St. Paul at sea. Since much time had been lost, and sailing was now dangerous, because that the fast had already gone by, Paul advised those members on his ship, saying, Sir, I can see that the voyage will be with danger and with much heavy loss, not only of the cargo in the ship, but also of our lives. But the centurion paid more attention to the pilot and to the owner of the ship than what Paul had said. Since the harbor was not suitable for spending the winter, the majority was in favor of putting to sea from there, on the chance that somehow they could reach Phoenix, where they could spend the rest of the winter. 
It was a harbor of Crete facing southwest and northwest. The storm at sea. When a moderate south wind began to blow, they thought they could achieve their purpose. So they weighed anchor and began to sail past Crete, close to the shore. But soon, a violent wind, called the Northeaster, rushed down from Crete. And since the ship was caught and could not be turned with its head to the wind, we gave way to it and were driven. By running under the lee of a small island called Cauda, we were scarcely able to get the ship's boat under control. After hoisting it up, they took the measures to undergird the ship, and then fearing that they would run on the Sirtis, which was a, a shoal, they lowered the sea anchor and so were driven. We were being pounded by the storm so violently that on the next day they began to throw the cargo overboard, and on the third day, with their own hands, they threw the ship's tackle overboard. When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, and no small tempest raged, all hope of our being safe was at last abandoned. Since they had been without food for a long time, Paul stood up among them and said, Men, you should have listened to me and not have sa set sail for Crete, and thereby avoided the damage and the loss. I urge you now to keep up your courage, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only a loss of our ship. For last night there stood by me an angel of, the, of God to whom I belong and whom I worship, and the angel said to me, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand before the emperor. And indeed, God has granted safety to all those who are sailing with you. So keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that will, it will be exactly as I have been told. But we have run to ground, we have to run aground on some island. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, today's theme of the day, I guess, with these readings, must be storms at sea and placing one's trust in God's hands. A reading from Acts shares the account of, of St. Paul's voyage on the oceans and the prophetic calling of Paul by God to survive times of adversity. And Paul, it seems, was being called to survive these times of adversity in order so that the gospel message might be testified before the Holy Roman Emperor himself. Now, in similar fashion to the Jonah narrative, this passage is yet another deliverance narrative, this time with God granting safety to both Paul and his companions. The question implicit in the text is this, what is Paul being saved for? I think that the answer is found in Paul living out his vocation, his specific service to God, which was to proclaim the gospel in new and strange lands. Each event of adversity that St. Paul overcomes, whether it's getting out of a locked jail cell or finding himself uh, being uh, saved from a shipwreck, all of these acts portray that the message that God has uh, want, is wanting the church to hear, and those of the early evangelists, is that in God all things are possible, and that God's will is not something that can be either locked up or overthrown even amidst life's tempests. Now this might cause us to reflect on our own sense of vocation today. How often do we reflect on God's will in our lives? Like St. Paul and the prophet Jonah, what is the role that God is calling us to live out? And how do our actions reflect God's indomitable will and spirit? Now, these are some things that we can reflect on in our lives and in our prayers today. Our service will continue uh, with the affirmation of faith found in the words of the hero Israel. And I invite you to join with me as together we say, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. This is the first in the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. We are the body of Christ. His spirit is with us. Therefore, may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And together, as one body in Christ, let us pray. 
Let us pray for all of God's children throughout the world, for ourselves as we pause in this time of worship today. Let us pray for our families and all those that we love. Let us remember Todd, our bishop, and all who serve and lead in our church. Lastly, let us remember the vulnerable in our communities. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for peace and goodwill among all nations, and for the care and well-being of all people. Lord, hear our prayer. I invite you to pray with me for the poor, and for all those who are sick at this time. Let us remember the hungry, the oppressed, all in isolation from their community. Let us pray for those in any need or trouble. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church in all of its expressions and denominations, for the ways that we are called to bring God's hope and love to others, and to never stop proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who have died in the peace of Christ and whose faith is known to God alone. Friends, I invite you uh, to pray with me uh, for our, a beloved member of our parish who passed away last week, David Beard. And we are remembering David's wife, Elaine, and family in our prayers at this time. Lord, hear our prayer. Lastly, let us give thanks to our gracious God for all of our blessings and for God's never-ceasing presence in our lives, now and always. Amen. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts to comfort us in all of our afflictions, to defend us from all error, and to lead us into your truth and love. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created and by whose love we are redeemed, guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves to your service and live this day in love to one another and to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Most loving God, you send us into the world that you love. Give us grace to go thankfully and with courage in the power of your Spirit. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon us and grant us his peace. Thank you for joining me today for Midday with Gray. I hope that this time of prayer has strengthened your faith and help you, helped you to feel connected to our St. George's family. Blessings in your day. We'll see you again soon. Bye for now.